Hey, what is going on everyone? In this series, what I'd like to do is go over the fundamentals of developing an app in Android Studio. So introducing you guys to things like switching between different activities, an app's lifecycle, and stylizing the user's interface to give it a unique look and feel. I think this series is going to help a lot of you guys out, so that's why I decided to make it. If you guys have anything specific that you would like me to talk about, just leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do about adding it into the series. So what I'd like to do in this video is go over an activity's life cycle. So we could take a look at this image here. I got it from the Android developer website, link to that down below. And what this is, it's just an oversimplification of each callback or state that the activity is in. There's a total of seven callbacks. So we have the first three on create, on start and on resume. These are called when the activity is first launched. And then we have the on pause, on stop and on destroy. This is when the user either navigates away or closes out of the app. And then we have the on restart. This is used for when the user navigates away from it, but eventually comes back to the activity. So it's not fully closed. In order to see what state an activity is in, what I did before this video was create two new activities. We have this main activity.java file and a main to activity.java file. So if we navigate over to this, you could see that I created all the different callbacks. So let me pull up that image again. We have our on create, on start, and on resume. You could see that I have in each of these callbacks a log message that will print to the terminal and allow us to see what state the activity is currently in. All right, so I pulled out the emulator and on here I have the lifecycle app that I created before the video installed onto the emulator. And what this app is going to do once I open it up, it's going to start printing out to the terminal or the log cat notifying us what state the activity is currently in. So if we launch this app, You'll notice that the activity goes to the first three bits of its life cycle, the on create, on start, and on resume within that order. So now let's say while the user was using the app, for some reason they were taken away from their current activity. So the one that we have loaded up here, let's say they navigated away from this. So in our case, we'll click this button that'll change to a new activity, and we can take a look and see what the activity state is currently in, which is the on stop. But you'll notice before that, it went through the on pause. This follows the current workflow of the app's life cycle, so in the on pause state, this is when the app is partially visible. So if you had an activity that was a little bit transparent and didn't take up the full screen, our main activity would be in the on pause state. But since we loaded up an entirely new activity that takes up the full screen, the on stop state was called because the activity is no longer visible to the user. But now let's say the user gets taken back to that activity. So they click this back button right here. You can see that the activity went through the on restart, start and resume callbacks. So you can see that also follows the workflow of the app's lifecycle. So once the activity comes back into view after being in the on stop, it goes to the on restart, which kind of builds up everything again, the start and then on resume, which makes it fully active for the user again. Another way that we're able to make our activity go into the on stop state is by exiting out of the app, but not closing it entirely. So if we just click the middle button and we navigate over to, let's say the calculator app that we made in the last series you could see that the activity for our lifecycle app is in the on stop state because it is no longer visible to the user. But the moment we navigate back to our lifecycle app, the activity runs through its on restart, start and resume states, and then it's fully active for the user again. So now what happens when you close the app entirely? So if we click this little square button and clear everything. You'll see that the activity goes through the on pause and on stop because it's no longer visible, but then you'll see that the system destroys the activity, which kind of cleans everything up. So you see that it goes through these last three states of its life cycle. So the reason why it's really important to learn about the activities life cycle is because once you start creating more complex apps, you're going to need to make sure that you're instantiating things in the correct callback and making sure that there are no processes still running in the background when they don't need to be. So for example, let's say you decided to make a camera app. Obviously you're going to need to utilize the camera resource, but let's say while someone was using your app, they got a Snapchat and they went to go answer that. Now they navigate away from your app and now the activity is in the on stop state, but it's still using the camera resource. Now when they get to Snapchat, most likely Snapchat isn't going to be able to use the camera because your app is currently using it, which is going to cause a lot of problems for the user. And the only way that they'll be able to use the camera is by physically closing your app, which isn't good practice. So I hope that makes sense to you. As always, if you have any questions about this, just leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.